Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I have been asked to talk about future of Islamic banking and finance. And I believe this is a very interesting topic for those who are interested in the development and progress of Islamic banking and finance in a particular country or globally. I would like to start with the current state of affairs of Islamic banking and finance worldwide. In our global Islamic finance report, we publish figures on the size of Islamic banking and finance worldwide. And in the 2018 report, we published the size of the industry to be 2.431 trillion US dollars at the end of 2017. There are progression, uh, there are projections about the future size of Islamic banking and finance. For example, many would believe that by 2020, the global size of Islamic banking and finance would be about 5 trillion, a figure which can be disputed. The question, uh, the fundamental question is, what would be Islamic banking and finance like in future? To answer this question, one, uh, one should look at Islamic banking and finance as of today. When we decompose the figure of 2.431 trillion US dollars, we find that about three-fourths of Islamic financial assets are held by Islamic banks or conventional banks with Islamic banking operations, windows or branches. So a major chunk of Islamic financial assets is with the Islamic banks. So one can very easily conclude that Islamic banking and finance is primarily Islamic banking. Other uh, areas of Islamic finance like Islamic capital markets. Uh, Islamic capital markets, uh, if we divide this into bonds, sukuk, and funds, we find that about 14-15% of Islamic financial assets are actually in sukuk. And about 4% or less is uh, in the assets held by, in or in the portfolios uh, held by Islamic fund managers worldwide. A very small proportion of Islamic financial assets are actually held by microfinance institutions and the Kaful operators and other non-bank Islamic financial institutions. The question arises, okay, if Islamic banking continues like this, the role of Islamic banks would become even more visible. And other institutions, especially insurance slash the Kaful institutions, they would play not a very significant role in Islamic banking and finance. When it comes to microfinance, uh, the story is not very encouraging. And this is a disturbing factor for many. Many people would like to associate Islamic banking and finance with the development process. It hasn't happened uh, in the past and even at present, the focus is not to use Islamic banking as a tool for development, as a tool, for example, for poverty alleviation as a tool for financial inclusion. Financial inclusion, poverty alleviation, and this kind of uh, targets, they are outside banking in general. Although in some countries, the regulators tend to bring these concerns into banking and finance as well by giving some targets to banks, including Islamic banks, to finance agriculture, to finance uh, women related projects and of course financial inclusion related activities as well. A person like me who has advocated Islamic banking and finance, I would like to see transfer of Islamic financial assets from banks 
to non-bank financial institutions. What do I mean by that? I would like to see microfinance institutions having more than the present 1% financial assets uh, in their operations. 1% of total Islamic financial assets in the world, this is not a very impressive figure. So in next five years, if we can increase micro Islamic microfinance institutions having about 5% of global Islamic financial assets under their management, this would be a good start. Uh, so this would help in financial inclusion as well. In order to increase the uh, Islamic financial assets in microfinance related activities, we have to look at some phenomena around the world. I'm really impressed by what has happened in Malaysia. In Malaysia, there is a bank called Agrobank. Agrobank was a conventional bank. However, in 2014, it was fully Islamized uh, and it has become a fully fledged Sharia compliant bank offering their, its services to uh, people in agriculture sector, in agri industry, etc. And they have some products which specifically target women. So they have uh, a few products which would ensure women empowerment and women entrepreneurship. There are some other institutions in Malaysia which are not banks like Amana Ikhtiar Malaysia which specializes in, in Islamic microfinance. I think there is a need to look into these practices to get implications for development of Islamic finance in other parts of the world. Similarly, Sudan is a story which is not discussed in Islamic banking and finance in general. However, when it comes to microfinance, and when I say microfinance, Islamic microfinance, and stories of financial inclusion, Sudan provides uh, a lot of interesting examples, and one should look into these examples to get implications for developing Islamic banking and finance in other parts of the world. In case of Pakistan, where I'm st st sitting at present, uh, there are quite a few interesting institutions. And if they are converted fully into Islamic financial institutions, this would allow to increase the assets under management of institutions specializing in microfinance, agriculture finance, financial inclusion, etc. One bank, Zari Tariqiyati Bank of Pakistan, it's a specialized institution offering its services to the agriculture sector. If following Malaysian example of converting Agrobank into a fully fledged Sharia compliant bank, the government of Pakistan takes steps to make Zari Tariqiyati Bank of Pakistan as a fully fledged Islamic bank that would ensure that financing to agriculture sector in a Sharia compliant finance increases. Similarly, uh, the story of microfinance in Pakistan is uh, very interesting. State Bank of Pakistan has done a tremendously good job to develop microfinance uh, sectors in the form of very comprehensive regulatory approach. And there are quite a few microfinance institutions in Pakistan which have interesting stories to share. Uh, so uh, the Islamic banking and finance community in Pakistan can look into the possibility of strengthening Sharia compliant financing in microfinance sector as well. So in future, on a country level, as well as globally, there is a possibility of non-bank financial institutions playing a bigger role than banks, which is the case now. Now, banks play a very, very powerful role in Islamic banking and finance. If some policies and steps are taken to bring non-bank financial institutions into equation, there is a likelihood that the share of 
non-bank Islamic financial institutions in total Islamic banking and finance would reach a point which would bring a lot of significance to this sector. If that happens and when that happens, Islamic banking and finance would be very much relevant to the development process and the activities and steps taken to improve financial inclusion, reducing poverty, and of course, bringing up a new role for women to play in, in economic activities. Thank you.